any of the academic stuff. Today, I really want to focus on the fun stuff, the stuff that's going to get you excited about songwriting. And I, honestly, I just want to get you guys on the same page as me because I love it. I think it's such an amazing art form and it brings me a lot of peace. When I'm stressed out, I write songs. And um, to be honest, I'm actually quite a nervous Nelly, even talking in front of people. Like right now, I'm nervous, you know, and you think, oh, that's silly. Why would you be nervous? You're a performer. But I do. I get in my head and I chose music because it really, it makes me feel so good. And I notice that when I sing, it makes other people feel good. And I realize that there's no sense letting my mind get in the way of that. Oh, I see you guys have got socks here too. You brought all your socks, hey? Because my husband, he's going to do some fun stuff with you just now. But basically, I want to focus on getting you songwriting, getting you um, having fun with this stuff. So I want to start off and I really, I want to encourage you guys to interact as much as possible. And I want to let you know that there's no judgment. I'm a musician, so you've got to look at me like a grown up that never grew up. I'm one of you guys, okay? I keep, I'm still doing this. So I don't worry about judgment. I don't think about, oh, is it good enough? Is it smart? Is it, that stuff doesn't even matter. And believe it or not, in the arts, it doesn't matter. Like what you've got to say and what you've got to share with the world is the most important thing. So I wanna ask you guys, what is a song? What is a song to you guys? What, what do you think about when, we talk about songs. I'd love to, you. Yeah? A way to express your feelings. Absolutely. Faith, you nailed it because that is everything. There's, there's a quote that I put down here and it's music is what feelings sound like. And I just, I think that is such a beautiful quote because in the world of our senses, we've got smell, touch, taste, hear. Sound is such a powerful sense. It takes you straight to another place. When you hear sounds, you get transported to another world. And when you're writing your feelings and sharing your feelings, and then you're also able to add sound to it, it's just so powerful. Um, so one of the things I wrote here, some people would say that music is poetry to sound. And I suppose that's very true. If we got into the real academics of it, people would say, well, no, that's not true at all. It's a different craft. But again, we're not worried about that. What we're worried about is getting our creativity out onto paper. So we're gonna get started. I really want you guys to interact with me. Um, so I've got some exercises that we're gonna get to, but I've also got my guitar here because I figured what better way than to show you and to share. Um, so starting off here, um, I like to imagine when you're thinking about songs, You've got the three elements that make up the song. You've got the words, right? Because the words are kind of, uh, it's the language. It's the way we can get specific about what it is we're sharing with people, right? But then you've got the sound and the, uh, and the chords and the melody. And that's where it's really powerful because it doesn't matter where in the world you are or what culture you are uh, or what language you speak, but everybody speaks music. So the cool thing about music is even if someone doesn't understand your words, they're gonna feel the music. So how cool is that? It really is a, it really is a, a medicine. Okay. Now I've actually got a little link. Um, but you know, the thing about songwriting as well is once you get started, there's so much that you can get out of it too. So the, the reasons we write songs are to help people out. But we're also helping ourselves out while doing it. You know, that's the amazing part of all of it. That's the amazing thing about exp expression. And that is honestly, I believe, why we have the arts, you know, music and painting and even movies. We get transported, we get taken to a new place for a moment. And that's also a really cool thing about the songwriting process is when you start doing it, you can be taken to a new world, you know. If you think about the, the lady J.K. Rowling that wrote uh, Harry Potter, she created an entire universe that almost everybody in this world knows about. I mean, we've got theme parks based on it and it all just came from her brain. 
but she just let it out onto a piece of paper like we're going to do. One of the exercises that I enjoyed doing, and I'm just speaking now because it's quite odd speaking and not knowing if anyone's hearing me or replying, and, but I want to think about the five senses because in songwriting, these are the most important ones. We already established that music is what feelings sound like. So if we want to get feelings involved, then we need to get the senses involved. That's the nose and the ears and the eyes and touch. And a great way to do this, this is a fun exercise, is to think totally out of the box. And what I'm about to say might not make any sense to you guys, but I want you guys to imagine. And um, if you want to know where I am on the piece of paper as well, I'm under the section that's, that says today is about the creative side, the fun part, where I've got music is what feelings sound like. Now I'm talking about the five senses and brainstorming. And you'll see that I've written muddling the senses and I've got an example, taste the fair. Now, if I said to you, what does the fair taste like? Have you guys ever been to a fair? Comments if you have. Have you guys been to a fair before? I, I only recently went to a fair because I'm from another country. We don't have fairs. Hannah says, yeah, she's been to a fair. And for me, we call it candy floss, but over here, you guys call it cotton candy. When, when I think about the fair, I think about the smell of cotton candy and, and those senses. So if I were writing a song about the fair, I would try capture all those things that take you right there to that moment. Because we are so connected to our senses that even just hearing someone talk about the sweet smell of burning sugar from the candy floss, you're almost at the fair already, just thinking about it, you know? because it's so specific to that place. And that's the trick with songwriting, is where you can incorporate those senses in interesting ways that no one else has done before. And there's no rules, that's the best part. So I want to really challenge you guys to think about using the senses with things that don't normally connect to those senses. Like when I said, taste the fair, I'm not talking about going to the fair and, you know, obviously the fair doesn't taste like something because it's a fair, it's not a food, it's a place. But then you think about those things that connect to it, you know what I mean? And then you're really getting out of the box. Another one is, um, and this is actually an expression that's been used a lot, is touch the sky. Nobody can touch the sky. But when you start thinking about what the sky would feel like if you were to touch it, all of a sudden you've got some really exciting things to write about. And that's what this is all about, is just actually getting your brain out of the normal way of thinking. And that's why this is so much fun, because you can really learn about yourself through writing about these obscure things, right totally out of the box. Um, and so I would like to challenge you guys. I want to know, and I'm just going to randomly pick one. Let's pretend now that we're writing a song about one of my favorite places in the world, the beach. What would the beach smell like to you? But I want you to think out the box, not just the sea. I want you to think about maybe sunblock, that smell of sunblock or uh, a pina colada cocktail. None of you should know what that tastes like because you shouldn't be drinking yet. But pineapples, the salt, brilliant. I I've had I had the slushy pina colada. Oh yes, there are non-alcoholic ones, so that is true. And that and that was at the fair. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. See, that can be that. That is why songwriting is so cool too, because no two songs are ever the same. And your experience of the world is always gonna be completely different to someone else's experience. Isn't that cool? No one is ever gonna, I'm telling you right now, if I said to all of us, all, all 15, 16 of us that are here, if I said we were gonna write a song about the beach, believe me, 
we would all come up with very interesting things. And why? Because some of us like to swim. So a lot of us are going to be talking about swimming in the water and others that don't even go near the sea. There might be someone here that's terrified of the beach, that their whole song is actually very sad. This could be very, a song about being frightened about the ocean and the depths of the sea and the unknownness, you know, not knowing what that sea is. So, you know, from everyone's viewpoint, it can be so unique. We, I, where I got this ukulele from, because I'm not down in Florida, I'm up in Virginia now. Um, I got this from my cousin, he's a lifeguard, and he went to the beach. And I, and I was swimming so deep, and I was going over waves. And when the waves were like curled up like this, they would like crush me and I'd be rolling around and I just kept swimming. Was that fun? <laughs> yeah. So is, it's a good experience for you, right? I got, I got, I got scratched by all the sand on the bottom. Ah, that's painful. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. I've hurt myself badly out in the ocean too. I've been, I've even been surfing and landed on rocks before. So the sea can be a dangerous thing, but it can also be a calming thing. The ocean to some people represents home if you're from the sea. But if you've never seen the ocean, like my good friend Olive, who uh, I did the voice with when I was in California last year filming the voice, she said to me the one day, can we go to the beach? I've never been to the sea before. And I was, I was so overwhelmed because I just couldn't even imagine never ever having seen the sea. And she's 21 and had never seen the ocean before. So you can imagine what the ocean meant to her when she went. Forever, the ocean will probably represent her time on The Voice because she'll think back to that moment where she was in California from the first time because she's from a place where there's normally snow. So you can see how different things in this world are, are always viewed differently. And then when you start adding that into our own personal experience, if we are free and we are honest and we are true to who we are in our writing and our creativity, you're gonna have something that is very unique. If you try to write like everybody else and you go out into the world and think, well, what I'm doing isn't worthy. I must try and be like that person. I must try and be like this. You're going to get away from those, those personal experiences that are going to make your art beautiful. And that is why it's so important to cultivate our creativity and put energy into our creative writing. And more important than anything is not to wear that judgment hat while you're doing all of this. So I would like to see, why don't you guys comment Drop some things down that make you smell the ocean. Just smell. Let's go. I'll give you some ideas. Like I said, sunblock. Seaweed, that's a great one. Girls, there's a chat down at the bottom, the little box that says chat, or at the top, depending on your screen. So go ahead and put your ideas in there. Sunscreen, that's a good one. And I'll move on while you guys try keep up, try, try drop your comments because it's important that we all engage. If you think no one's listening, believe me, it's more fun when we all engage. It's, all, it's more fun when you drop your suggestions and there's no judgment, no, there's no wrong answer. Seaweed is a good one. That's got a strange smell, doesn't it? What do you feel when you're at the beach? For me, I think about the sun's warmth. I think about my skin against the sun. Maybe the water, what does the water feel like? Salt stuck to your skin. That's a Keep your ideas coming. The wind. The wind warms sand. What does the ocean sound like? I'll tell you what, what I always think about when I think of the sea and the sound of the sea. I think about the sound of a, a little bell ringing. 
because in my hometown, when you go to the ocean, there's always people that walk along the beach with uh, coolers full of ice cream and ice cream lollies. And there's a man that rings a bell. So when you're on the beach and you hear that bell ringing, it's, it's, uh, it's always exciting because you know ice cream is near. And of course, that's probably very specific to where I'm from. So my, my song would have maybe the mention of a bell, the taste of ice cream, the feeling of the warmth. Of course, one that comes up so much in our songwriting, one of the more common ones is what you see. Because when we're writing a song, we like to use our words, the jilting of shells, that's beautiful. When you think of the ocean, you think about this beautiful scenery because the sea is so gorgeous. You think of all that blue. You think of the vastness. You think of open skies. Maybe the sound of seagulls. <coughs> Not the most pleasant sound, but when you, when you hear the sound of seagulls, all of a sudden it makes you think of the beach. So that <coughs> sound is actually quite beautiful after a while, isn't it? What are some of the other things you might hear at the beach? You see, so this is what we do when we start writing. We think of our, our theme and our topic. And more specifically, if we were to give our song a title, it would give us more direction ultimately. And it's why I encourage you before you even start writing to come up with a title because it's not permanent. Nothing is ever permanent in songwriting. In Nashville and um, in songwriting scenes, they even call the act of writing, rewriting, because most of the time you're taking what's already been created and looking at, looking at it and rewriting it. And so it's so important to not get too, um, too much in your head. You just want to keep those ideas down. So I start off and I imagine that my words are a drawing when I'm creating a song. And then I use the music, the chords and the melodies to almost color in that picture. But it's important to know where you're heading from the top. Like I said, before I went to the shops, I know where I'm heading because I know that I need to go this way, that way. And similarly, if you have a title, and let me give you an example. If I decided to call my song, How I Wish I Could Fly, How I Wish I Could Fly, Ultimately, every line of the song, if I've already written my, my, my title, every line of my song is probably going to have a little bit more direction because I've already named the song. If while I'm creating, I decide, actually, this is actually a little bit more interesting to go another direction, well, then I can do that because it's my song and there's no rules, right? But that is a great way to start. One of the great songwriting exercises for those that don't really know what to write about, because believe me, I've had days where I sit and I'm really, really excited to write a song and I don't have a clue what I'm going to write. And that's okay as well, because it's unbelievable. But when you just start writing, something magical starts to happen. It's almost like the superpower inside of you starts to take over and guide you. It's almost like the song starts to write itself but you have to practice just letting your creative ideas come out of you. Okay. And one of the, one of the great, uh, one of the great, uh, we, uh, the great ways to let this stuff come out is to have a listen to the music that you really love. And it doesn't even have to be a song you love. It can be a random song. Go onto Spotify or YouTube and find a completely random song and then have a listen to the words and think about how it is that you can take those same words and make them totally reimagined in your own way. So for example, as you can see on the page I've written, and now we're at point B over here, if you guys are following, I've written thinking out loud and some of you might be no, because I try to pick a song that's very, very well known. If you don't know it, don't worry. But thinking out loud, this is the, the Ed Sheeran song. Ooh, 
Or when your legs don't work like they used to before. Or when I can't sweep you off of your feet. The chorus is, I'm thinking out loud. So if I were just to take that phrase, thinking out loud, and I thought, how would I say thinking out loud? And this is just a way to get those creative ideas flowing. I could go with imagining in words. I could think of imagining in words. I could go through the whole song and try to think of how to say what Ed Sheeran said in my own personal way. And by the end of it, I would have an entire song that was probably more unique to me than I'd even imagine it had I sat and tried to write from a blank page. And so these are really great tricks. And the cool thing is there's so much music out there that you're never gonna run out of ideas. Another one is just to look at song titles because interesting enough, the, uh, song titles can be used until the cows come home. I don't know if you guys have that expression um, over here. But song titles, you can have 5,000 different musicians using the same song title. And a great example is A Wonderful World. There's been a lot of songs written about A Wonderful World. None of them sound anything the same. I see trees are green, red roses too. We could take that and you could think about your wonderful world. And how is the world wonderful for you? And you could decide to take those lines, I see trees of green, red roses too. And you could decide to think of other things with color, like I see a clear, clear blue sky. I see rolling green fields. And by the end of this process, you might find yourself writing a song about home or writing a song about a place you dreamed of once, you know? So that's one of the great exercises that I, that I like to look at too. Um, and another one is to really capture what it is that certain songs that I love all have in common. So what I like to do is build um, Spotify playlists of songs that touch me. And when I say touch me, songs that really uh, vibrate with me, songs that make me feel something. And then what I try to do is analyze what it is that I, I love about those songs. Is it the words? Is it the melody? Is it the chords? And I try to capture those things. And if there's something that I particularly like about that song, without thinking about it, I'll go and I'll try to cover the song. Or I'll just try to play it. Um, and then. I've got a reference later when I'm sitting and I'm trying to come up with ideas. I might think, you know what? I love that new Billie Eilish song and I loved what she did with the chord progression. And I think to myself, if I just take that element of the song, how can I take it and make it my own? And those are great ways, you know? You never want to steal somebody's song. You never want to go out about into life taking other people's ideas. And this is not what this process is about. This process is about in being influenced. Just like fashion, when you go to Publix or you go out to Target and you see somebody wearing a really cool hat and you think, gee, I wonder if I can pull that off. You find yourself down, um, you know, maybe at the back of a store somewhere and you try the hat on. And that's what, that's what this is about. It's about trying on different things that other people are doing. And that's where it becomes exciting. I want to ask you guys, what is it that you love about music? Different elements. Is it the words or the music? And there's no right answer. Do you guys have favorite musicians? And is, is there a reason for those artists? Do you like the subject matter they create? Is anybody with me still? Is anybody out there? Because I can talk and talk and talk. Taylor Swift. She's an amazing songwriter. Now, Taylor Swift. You know, she, she often talks about her songs as letters to people. And I think that is a wonderful a way to look at a song. I read somewhere that Taylor Swift, she actually, she looks at each song as a letter to somebody. 
And think about how powerful that is. Think about how powerful that is. If there's somebody that you just, you've had enough of this person because they're mean, they bully other people, or somebody that just thinks they're all that in a bag of potato chips. And you don't want to be mean. You don't want to say that to that person. Well, you know what? You can take a piece of paper and you can write it all out and it'll feel so good. And if you want to, you can sing. You can sing that song. Person probably will never know it's about them. And that is so powerful because it becomes an outlet for you. You know. Um, and I think that's one of the cool one of the cool aspects of songs as well. Is you get to have a statement. You can be gutsy. You can wear your opinions on your sleeve. It's a space where you don't get judged. Oh, Tori Kelly, she's phenomenal, Hannah. She's a great artist too. So this is what I would like you guys to do because I'm gonna love and leave you soon because we've got some fun juggling and, and juggling is important. This is actually a hobby that I've picked up. I've never been a juggler. I met my husband and he was a juggler and I thought, whoa, that's interesting. And I think he thinks what I do is very interesting too. And believe it or not, he actually picks the guitar up every now and then and practices. And when I'm feeling very frustrated, I go out into the backyard and I actually juggle. Because what I've noticed is it actually helps with my hand-eye coordination as well. You know, when we're singing and playing, we're doing a whole lot of things at the same time. It's not really that different. And uh, juggling is a great way to just drop what you're doing, get out of your head, and get the body moving. But before I go, this is the activity that I'd love you guys to think about. And you can see over here I wrote, and I wish I had more time with you because I feel like I've just glazed the surface of all of this, but I'm hoping that I've got you excited about this process. Let me know, have, are you guys feeling a little more excited about songwriting and what it can do? Are you aware that you can go to another world? If you're into Star Wars and space, songwriting is a doorway to go shooting through the stars. You can write and create your own world that you can go escape in. And the most beautiful thing about it is once you've created it, you can share it and you can make other people feel those things. And you can, you can put other people in your own mindset as well, which is so sweet and so super. So here's an example that I started writing. And like I said, I started off with the title. So I just wrote clouds. And then I had the title idea, just random, didn't think about it too much. You don't want to think about it too much. You want to access the part of the brain that comes up with the fun ideas. You know that moment where you're like, I've got a great idea. And then you're like, oh, but that all oh, but moment, you want to leave those for later because that's when you put everything together. That's when we start going in for the older girls that are listening. You'll probably know about the thesaurus. It's an amazing book. That you can open to any word and it's going to give you a list of 500 other words that mean the same thing because language is also a very exciting medium. There are so many ways to say the same thing. And that's why the world needs you and your songs because no one else is going to write the same song that you would. No one else has had the experience you've had and sees the world specific to the way you see it. So what I like to do is I take a blank piece of paper and this is what you guys can do now that I'm going to love and leave you. You're going to think of a song title. First of all, your theme. So I thought of clouds because I'm thinking I want a picture in my head that I can draw from. Just like uh, that beautiful backdrop you can have. I know I can select one of my own backdrops here. But what I'd like to do is uh, think about clouds, create a title like I did here. Life is a cloud. Why I picked that? I don't know. Am I gonna wonder why? No. Am I gonna judge it? No, I'm gonna keep moving forward. I'm gonna take a piece of paper and a pen and I'm gonna write down every word that I can possibly think of about clouds. Clouds being fluffy, clouds being white, clouds being changing, sweeping, puffy, clouds hiding the sun, clouds being high up there, clouds being low, clouds being sparse, uh, floating far up. You can see I, I, I ran out of ideas because I obviously was uh, rushing this before I joined you guys. But believe me, there's no end to this. And then the moment you get stuck, I want you to go back to the senses because music is all about feeling, like I said. And I want you to imagine, what would a cloud feel like? What would a cloud taste like? 
would it taste like the rain? Or would it taste like cotton candy, like the one we got at the fair? Uh, probably. <laughs> uh, would a cloud, would a cloud be cold? Would it be warm? Uh, you know, so those are the, the, the ways I want you to think and think out the box. Honey, are you nearly ready to come I'm join ready, us? Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. First of all, I want to see if they're even here. Have I bored you to death or have you guys had fun with me? Are you guys even there anymore? I don't know. I'm not seeing any comments. I'm not seeing comments. Drop your comments if you guys are still there, folks. Oh, there we go. Click on mute, guys, and say hi. Have you guys had fun? Yes. Yeah. Are you, are you excited Basically. to start writing ideas, Dan? Basically, you can't touch your cloud. You can't, but in music, you can do anything. Anything is possible. And I changed, I changed my name to Pikachu. You see that? Yes, I did. <laughs> Before each age comes to join, I just want to remind you of the power of music. The moment you start thinking to yourself that none of this means anything, you are so wrong. Music helps the world more than any medicine, more than anything you can buy, anything. It's, it's just the most incredible thing. And I hope you guys keep music in your hearts and you keep at it. It doesn't matter how good you are at it. Don't let anybody tell you that you're good at it or bad at it or whatever, because it doesn't matter. Don't ever tell anybody they're not good at it because you'd be lying. There is no right or wrong with music. And you can honestly, you can, you can heal people. You can save somebody's life sharing a song with them. Okay, it helps with your concentration. It helps with depression. It connects us. It's a universal language. When you're really, really, really old and you listen to music, you feel young again. Can you imagine that sort of power? Talking about old, I got an old guy here. He wants to ho, ho, ho. He, wants to, he wants to juggle with you guys. But remember guys, I'm on social media and I'm around and I'm a real person. And I love all of you, I really do. I wanna be in, connect, in connection with you guys. I wanna help you out with all of this. And you know what? I wanna see what you guys come up with. So write some stuff, share it with me. Maybe we'll even write a song when all of this COVID-19 horrible stay at home stuff is over. We can get together and we'll do this properly, okay? Is that good? You guys are gonna share your hearts and write good stuff, okay? Lots of love, here's Edgy. 